So hopefully you saw me go through the different units and how we convert it um, to different bits. It was on this slide, but it's where it cut out. Um, so converting minutes to seconds, you need to multiply by 60. And converting hours, you need to multiply by 3,600. You can see the slide. This will be up if you get the slide. So I'm not going to go into it in any more detail anyway, because we want to move on and get back to it. Uh, just going to restart my timer, so we're back on track. Um, electrical circuits. Now, I, I think this is a big thing. Personally, there's two types of circuit you need to know. You've got series circuits. Series circuits involve all the components being on one loop. In this case, we have two identical light bulbs and just a cell on a loop. But all the components must be on the same loop if we are in series. Parallel circuits, the components must be on more than one loop. I've shown a parallel circuit with two loops here, but that could be uh, three or four loops as well. It doesn't matter as long as it's got more than one loop. When we talk about series circuit, there's things they like you to be able to do with it. They like you to be able to um, work out what the current will be if you put an ammeter in series. If you put an ammeter in a series circuit, you just need to put it anywhere on the circuit. It doesn't matter in series where you put the ammeter because the current is the same all the way around um, a series circuit. So in series, the current is the same anywhere if you measure it. It would be the same in between the bulbs, either side, by the battery or cell. The current is always the same. But the voltage or potential difference is split between the components. Now if these are identical bulbs, it's split evenly. Usually when they use cells, each cell is 1.5 volts. And they can have multiple cells in there, so if you have two cells it would be 3 volts. 1.5 plus 1.5. If we have two components, now in this we've only got one cell, so 1.5 volts. Because they're identical bulbs, they will divide the potential difference evenly between them. So each will get 0.75 volts in this example. So current is the same all the way around in a series circuit, whereas the potential difference is shared between the components. In parallel, the rules are slightly different. So in our parallel circuit with more than one loop, the current is split between the loops. If they're identical bulbs, it will be split evenly between the loops. If they're not identical bulbs, then they will have to give you some information. They might give you uh, the current here and the current here, and you would have to work out what the current would be left over here. So you would do this number, whatever the current was here, subtract the current from this to leave what was going around, what current was flowing around this bottom loop. When they rejoin over here, it gets back together. So the same current will be found here as here, after the loops have rejoined. But in terms of potential difference or voltage, that is always the same in each of the loops. So with this example, we've got one cell. I said each cell is 1.5 volts. So this bulb is getting 1.5 volts, and that bulb is getting 1.5 volts. If I have another bulb, it will get 1.5 volts. Advantages to parallel circuits are, because they each get the full potential difference, all of these bulbs, or each of these bulbs, are as bright as they should be. And they're, they're shining with that full amount of energy. Whereas in series, if I add another bulb in, the bulbs will get dimmer because they're having to share that potential difference between them. Similarly, if there is a break in one of these bulbs, if one of the bulbs blows, the whole circuit stops working. Whereas in parallel, if one of the bulbs breaks, the other one will still light up. And that's why parallel circuits are used in your homes. Because if one bulb blows, you don't want all of your bulbs in your house to go out. This formula I put up again because it's so important. If you know the current and you know the voltage going through that bulb, you can work out the resistance of that bulb by rearranging this formula. Um, so they may ask you to do that. The voltage or potential difference divided by the current is equal to the resistance. Now just taking a step back, whenever you have a question that asks you to write down a formula, not one of the formulas you've given, but a formula you've got to remember, if you cannot, for the life of you, remember what that equation is, do not leave that question blank. Write down any formula using those things. So if you can't remember this exact one, write out any formula. Usually just put the first one equals the other two things multiplied together. 
and then use that equation as you've written it, that formula, in the next calculation. Because that's what they will do. They will ask you to write down, uh, write down the equation that links potential difference, current and resistance. And then the next question will expect you to use that formula to do a calculation. If you've left it blank, you won't be able to get any error carried forward marks. Whereas if you've got it wrong in the first part, you will only be marked down for that first error and you will still get the marks for the calculation. So write any formula you can think of and just use that. Again, lots and lots on this, on this uh, slide, so I'm not expecting you to maybe read this all off the board. But it is a required practical link to circuits, and it didn't come up last year, so there's a chance it will. I, strangely enough, had a feeling this would be an important uh, practical, but that is based on nothing more than, than gut feeling, so don't read too much into it, don't focus too much on it, but I'm going to go through briefly what it is now. So this is to check how the length of a wire affects the resistance. You set up a circuit, like this circuit diagram is shown here, but where it says resistance wire over this gap, you have uh, what looks like this, which is essentially a meter ruler with a thin wire attached to it. And you crocodile clip to different lengths on that wire. So you need to set up the circuit, circuit as shown, make sure one of the crocodile clips is on zero on your ruler, and set the other crocodile clip, I would suggest initially starting at 10 centimetres, which will be quite close together. You set the power pack to 4 volts, and then you turn it on. You need to record the length of the wire, which may well be 10, if that's what you're starting at. You need to record the reading on the ammeter, which is the current in amps, and the potential difference um, in volts across the wire. <coughs> Excuse me. Hay fever's bad this time of year. Um, you then need to use the equation, which is from the other one, V equals IR, but resistance is equal to potential difference divided by current to find the resistance in that wire. Because these two things are what you're interested in. Does the length of wire affect the resistance? You will then need to turn off the power pack, undo this crocodile clip that's at 10, and move it 10 centimetres further away to 20. And then repeat the readings. Turn it on again, take your readings, and then turn it off. Do it again at 30. Um, you should repeat this experiment at least twice to ensure you've got consistent readings, and do it all the way up to about 100 centimetres. Um, once you've got that, you should, if you've done this correctly, see a pattern where if the length of the wire increases, the resistance will also increase. So that should be the pattern that we observe. Uh, but that's how you set it up. The number one risk of this experiment is when this wire has got electrical current flowing through it, it will heat up. Therefore, um, the, the, the risk is that you will get a burn off of that wire, because that is an exposed wire that can get hot. So you do need to cool, uh, make sure that you turn off the power pack, allow it to cool down, if you see it start to glow. Okay. Um, you can plot um, a graph to show that as length of wire increases, the resistance increases, and that should be a graph that shows it's proportional. Uh, so you should see that in the pattern of the graph, the line of best fit that you draw at the end of it. Now to what extent they'll go into in this experiment, I don't know, but like I say, it is quite a clean one. So we've got mains electricity as well, it goes on to mains electricity. Um, in the UK you need to know that mains electricity is at 230 volts and at 50 hertz. Uh, that's the frequency, that's the potential difference. It is also what we call alternating current. Alternating current means the current changes its direction uh, rapidly. And that's what the 50 hertz means. It means it changes 50 times every second. It flips back and forth, goes one way and then the other. Um, so, we can also use an equation on this. This is given on the uh, equation sheet to find the frequency of it using the time period. But I'm not going to go into great detail on that at this point. It does lead into another experiment. Um, where we have uh, IV characteristics. IV, I being the current, the voltage, uh, the potential difference.